Hello everybody, welcome to the Red Men TV. My name is Dan Club and I'm joined by Sean Malay, the author of Hillsborough, When Will Dad Be Home? One boy's story of a tragedy. And this is a Liverpool library with a little bit of a twist, as you'll find out along the way. First and foremost, Sean, how are you, mate? UK? I'm really good, yeah, and thanks for inviting me in to talk about the book. Absolutely, our pleasure, 100%. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I want to take you back right to the start, really, in terms of the book and how it all came about. I mean, listen, you know, the events live long in the memory around here of course to do and beyond but what sort of inspired you to write this book is it something you've always wanted to do something you've always had in mind how did it come it came about almost by by accident really i've written other children's books in the past and i was reading one of them in toxic library a group of kids like i used to go around doing readings and on the day it was a summer's day i had shorts on and i had a pair of socks on which just happened to be Liverpool socks and in the break the woman that worked in the library stopped to talk about football and got talking and she was telling me about her auntie that lived in Bath and that had come up from for the weekend and brought the kids and he went and done a tour of Anfield, went all around the ground, done the trophy room, got to the Hillsborough Memorial and the two little kids said to the mum, what's it for? And the mum said, I don't know. And I was gobsmacked. I, I was saying, what? Someone outside the city doesn't know what this means. So at the time, at the time, Dan, I was teaching. So when I went into the school on the Monday, I was teaching a group of year six kids who were aged 10 and 11. Mm. And I said, can anyone tell me what Hillsborough means to them? So being kids, all the hands go up, dead excited. And out of 30 kids, I reckon five maybe got close, but a million miles away. Mm. And I thought, this is wrong, this. This, 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 is, this is a story that's got to be told. Mm. Future generations yeah. can't forget this. And I know there's loads of books out there about Hillsborough, but I've never felt that it's something that a, a young kid would pick up and want to read. Because... You know, it's just too high, but I was, suppose. Yeah. So I've written my book from the point of view of nine-year-old Frankie, and it is sort of written through his eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely geared for kids, but it's also for adults as well because of the subject matter. And it's not so much about the, you know, the justice campaign and all that. It's not really about that. What it's about is the impact on Frankie, his little sister, his mum and dad, his auntie and his uncle, mm -hmm. just that family and how they cope and the ramifications of losing the dad, especially at such an early age, mm -hmm. plus the ramifications for the mum. You know, all the bills are theirs now. The, whole, the way the whole concept of the family changed yeah. throughout one, one, you know, tragedy. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. I mean, I said in the intro there almost, you do take it for granted. You just expect a story of this magnitude, something so seismic and something so powerful as well, and of course so harrowing. You do expect almost automatically that it would transcend Liverpool, but quite clearly it doesn't because, mm -hmm. you say, there, there's people from Bath, you know, not a million miles away yeah. from any stretch of imagination, who don't either don't fully understand the ramifications and what it meant to the city and just how impactful it was or, or don't understand at all, don't have any concept of it whatsoever. So you're absolutely spot on. It's it's, it's, it's crucial that the memory of such events in Hillsborough lives on and that the story remains being told. And as you say, where better to do it than, than children, essentially, and, and into kids, like, and into yeah. schools. That's absolutely massive. It's massive. It's imperative. Um, and on that note, actually, it's a big part of the book and release of the book was getting it into schools and getting it taught into schools as well. I know you were sort of in behind the campaign amongst that. I know Ian Byrne, who we know quite well as well, was a big push on that in Parliament and stuff like that. I mean, how has all that come about and, you know, how much success have you seen from that? To, surprisingly, quite a lot. It was Kevin Roach, who's the publisher of the book, who's, who's done an awful lot behind the scenes. And it was him that got in touch with Ian Byrne because he knew Ian Byrne was, you know, the, the real truth legacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Ian Byrne was looking for a book, like a, like a gateway book. And he said, he, he got in touch with Ian and said, we've got one. We've got one already written out. It was written by a teacher. So he's got lesson plans for it. Anything you need, we've got. So he called us in to, you know, to see what we had. And he was over the moon that he said, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. And this has saved me an awful lot of time and effort because it's there. And where we willing to give him it. And we just said, yeah, you can have it. We don't want nothing. Take the book, take the lesson plans, do what you want. Uh, and as you mentioned there, it was it was a question that he asked in the Houses of Parliament. And uh, my book is now, it's not on the national curriculum, but it's on the, it's on the curriculum in Merseyside. So every school in Merseyside now, there's a drop-down box on the computer and my book's on there. So it's on there for them, you know, the future generations thing. But ideally, we're trying to get proper hard copies into school. Mm. So we're working with the LFC Foundation who are delivering lessons on Hillsborough and using my book, taking the book in. 
So that's the plan now. Like, I know mm. I can talk further in a minute about why we're going to fund it. No, absolutely, yeah. And I know the obviously the, the LFC Legends game was just this weekend gone, and a big part of their drive right now is the education program. So I imagine that comes hand in hand with what you're saying. Yeah, very much. Well. So. That's, that's, that's that's incredible. Well, that's that's another reason behind the book. I mean, I wrote it for the reason initially for the reason I told you. You know, about the woman didn't know, and I'm yeah. thinking, oh my god, what's going on? Got to tell the world. But also. Stephen Coppock, who died at Hillsborough, was a mate of mine. We were only mates from when we were like toddlers up until we left primary school, so 11, because we, we went our separate ways then. But when his name was read out, I thought, oh my God, you know, he's one of our gang. All right, I haven't seen him for years, but he's still one of our gang. So the book was dedicated to him. And we were with Margaret Aspinall the other week, because she's, you know, she's behind it 100%. Like, um, and she was saying about the tragedy chanting, and that's another reason behind the hard copies into school, because if a kid takes the book home and reads it at home, hopefully someone else picks it up. And if they don't, and the kid goes to match with the dad, their uncle, whoever, and they start the tragedy chanting, then I want the little kid to say, Dad, remember that book we read? Yeah. Remember that little boy who lost his mum and, you know, lost his dad and that? So that's the reason behind it. And also, Dan, it's not just Liverpool. It's it's Man United with Munich. It's, it's Rangers with Ibrox. It's Bradford with the fire. It's it's all tragedy champ. It's just got to be eradicated. Yeah. And if it means educating, then, you know, educate. No, oh, 100%, yeah. And unfortunately, that, that term, tragedy champ, is one we're all too familiar with. Not just years gone by, but all too recently as well. We've seen enough of that. Um, you mentioned a moment ago, obviously, the perspective of a, of a young lad and how that's very unique in the way it's written and stuff like that. What was it you mentioned? Is that a lot of books about Hills, but lots been said and written and rightfully so about Hills, but to make sure we never forget what happened on that day. What was it that made it so special to you or made it so important to you to write it from a lad's point of view? It was the shock of being told by the woman whose auntie was from Bath, mm. which shocked me enough. But yeah. going into my own school in the middle of Garston, mm. where these kids are all aged 10, 11, and none of them knew. And I'm thinking, if you don't know, do your parents know? Because the parents are only young. So it was that, that was the impact that really made me think, if you want to change anything, you've mm. got to change it with the kids. You've got yeah. to change it with the youth. It's the only way. Yeah. You know, you've got to work on the future generations coming through. Yeah. And that way the world will get spread. And, and going back to that, I go back to Abba Van, which I don't even know if you know yourself, but Abba Van was a terrible thing that happened in the 60s. I wasn't born, but I know about Abba Van. I know all the kids that were killed in Abba Van through the, you know, the coal that slid down the, the, mm. the mountain because my mum and dad told me and my sisters told me and my brothers told me and that's exactly what I want with this book. I want them to pass that story down or in my case, pass the story up almost yeah. from young to old. 100%, yeah. Um, now, I mentioned at the top that we're here for a Liverpool Live with a little bit of a twist because obviously the book is there and the book's absolutely imperative that the story continues to get told, as I say, but it's now been transformed and it's about to hit the stage. It you know, really tell us is, about that. yeah. I'd like to say it was it in Broadway, but it's not, <laughs> not yet. No, um, again, Kevin Roach, the producer, and Zara Brown, who's the director, I've been working closely with them and a group of actors who are just incredible. And we've got it as a stage production. It's going to be on the Capstone Theatre in Shaw Street on the 11th and 12th of April. That was the closest we could get to coincide with the mm. 35th anniversary. Mm. So that's going really well. And going back to the books in schools, this play is a 100% non-profit. Like when we give the books to Ian Byrne and said, do what you like with them, we just want the story out there. The stage play is exactly the same. So obviously people are buying tickets to go, but every single penny of it will pay the bills that we've got to pay. So we have to pay for the theatre, the actors and whoever else. And mm -hmm. anything that's over then is going into the LFC Foundation to buy more books, to get more books into school. So we're making nothing because that's not what this one's about. No, of course not. No, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly it's clear work of passion. The work of something very close to your heart, as you mentioned a moment ago. And we've all been affected in numerous different ways by the disaster back then, and continues to be so now. Of course, I mean, in terms of the play itself, you remain very hands on with production, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's front and centre. Well, I, I I was thinking, you know, they're not going to want me there, like, but they, you know, I go down to an awful lot of rehearsals, and honest to God, to see it, to see my idea that I wrote. 2019 become live and real in front of my eyes it's dead emotional and the way the actors are doing it I've I come out of rehearsals and I've been crying and I've been laughing it's just 
honest to God, it's exceptional. And I'm not just saying this, but it's one of the best things I've ever seen. Really, yeah. Yeah, honestly, it really is. That's special, yeah. I mean, you said it there, but it's going to be very powerful, very emotional, of course. It's certainly from, from your point of view of being so heavily involved in it, of course. But for everyone who, who gets a chance to see it, of course. But you mentioned the actors. Who else is involved in this in terms of production, in terms of directing and stuff like that? Who well, else is As it? I say, we've got Zara, who's directing it. We've got Kevin, who's the producer. Um, it, sorry, the, the um, publisher and mm. Elton to produce it, me the writer, and seven brilliant actors. We've got Joel Cousins, uh, Lucy Waring, I'm going to get all your names wrong now, <laughs> aren't I? Mike no Newstead, Don Dent, um, who else, who else, who else? Debs Elizabeth, uh, who've I forgot? <laughs> Kevin Coburn, who've I forgot, who've I forgot? And Leah. There we go. Yeah, yeah and honest to God, they're, they're just brilliant. They are, they really are. Yeah, special. And, again, yeah. You... and they're like a family, you know, they're, they're yeah. supposed to be a family. Hmm. And they've become that close. Yeah. That honestly, it's... It must be difficult, and, you know, from a personal point of view, listen, it's not an easy topic to talk about. It's one that needs to be spoken it's about, It's a real hard sell. Of course, of it, course. It, it really yeah. is. And it's a really, you know, it's a really harrowing tale, and, you know, it's never an easy topic to, to broach, and it's never an easy conversation to have because, ultimately, it's a very, very, very sad thing that happened, but, and it's heartbreaking. But for the people involved, it must feel extra special to be involved in something like this. Well, I mean, several of them, early 20s, they, they, you know, haven't got a clue. They, no but not that they haven't got a clue. That's not fair to say that. Obviously, they don't remember. They didn't know much about it. So since doing this, you know, they've all been on the Google. They've all been asking parents, and that, that's exactly what I want. That is exactly what I want. You know, they're just doing it because they're trying to get into the character. But that's what I want. I want them to go and ask people. I want kids to go and ask. And I want anyone who's not sure ask. And if not, Google. And if not, read the book. Yeah. Come and see the play. Yeah, it's, it's all a learning. It's all a learning process, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. You see, you know, it's fine not to know. But find out, and like I say, discover exactly, and learn. Yeah. Yeah, don't just be ignorant to it, 100%. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, in terms of tickets and where you can find them and stuff like that, and obviously you mentioned the dates again and when it's on and where it's on and stuff, where can people find it? Well, as I say, it's on the Capstone Theatre, which is part of Hope University, and it's the one on Shore Street. Uh, if you go into the Capstone Theatre, you can buy tickets there. If you go to Beatles, Liverpool and more, that's Kevin's, my, my publisher's site, they're selling tickets. And like-minded productions are also selling tickets. Amazing, yeah. And, and, and if you, you know, if you find me on Facebook or anywhere, I'll send you tickets too. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. If, if you haven't already sold it enough, which I believe you have, like, why should people be coming to this? Why should people be buying the book? Why should parents be encouraging the kids to, to get hold of the book and read it and come and watch? To know, because if you don't know your history, this has not been an Evertonian here, if you don't know, because if you don't know history and what went on, things don't change. Plus, all the tragedy chanting being in the in the news again recently, you know, and I, you know, I've watched the tragedy chanting, and it's not just kids who are doing it; it's men who should know better and probably remember. But it's just educating people. It's just, yeah, it's just that. Yeah, just got to got to get the message out there and, and stop it for all grounds and all clubs yeah, who go through it. No, you're right. It's absolutely crucial, as you're saying. It's important that these things aren't forgotten. It's important that the memory of the people involved that day live on. As yeah, well, I think. yeah, exactly. Uh, Sean, sure. absolute pleasure. Dan, Thank thanks very much for no inviting me. In. No Thank problem you. at all. Um, yeah, find the links for the tickets as Sean mentioned in the description. I will see you all again very soon. Take it easy. <laughs>